I am Andrus Kulikowskis. This is Math for Wisdom. Michael Schreiber in Vienna, Austria, is a participant of the Math for Wisdom community. You will recognize him from the video. Welcome to Math for Wisdom. And uh, I am presenting today my conversation with him that I made in the making of that video. Uh, he talks about Math for Wisdom and also about his relationship uh, with truth. For Michael, truth is an inner right to have a mental reservation. And so this is one in a series of conversations uh, with members of the Math for Wisdom community that will help to get to know them and each other and appreciate the wonderful landscape of truth. So I wanted to ask you, Michael, so what does Math for Wisdom mean uh, to you so far? Mm, well, I, I share the ambition to make sense of how things relate. And um, I, I've always been uh, interested in many areas of mass and so, uh, I always uh, wanted to unify perspectives and so observing other people try to unify perspectives and what might be the reactions of other people in, the, in, in this uh, process are kind of uh, interesting for me because I, I see how difficult it actually is to arrive at a common language and a common understanding and and uh, the difficulty of choosing uh, ways to formulate or ways to show how one formulation might relate to another formulation is is interesting and uh, so all the particular examples for that they are less interesting maybe than the overall difficulty of identifying common ground and uh, so part of my thinking about this is that we we are in a difficult spot because we use a linear medium like video or mm -hmm. text. And part of the structures are not linear. In the, with linear, I don't mean uh, linear operators at the moment. I mean just the sequential uh, presentation of sounds and images and characters like the, having something which uh, proceeds along a line of time or attention and so part of the issue for me is that it's easy to get lost in this in this sequential presentation I think we, we, we should probably use sequential instead of linear to mm -hmm. avoid at least some confusion, which is always lurking around the corner. So let's say this sequential uh, technology of uh, communication is an extra complication. And so I, I very much like uh, diagrams and two-dimensional representations like on a, even if you read the paper, you have a chance to let your eye move to a previous part of the argument and compare the expression there and the new expression and, and you you could, in principle, draw lines with a highlight pen or something like that to 
to illustrate the argument, and that seems actually to be to be one of the tricks of the chat GPT or other um, large pre-trained uh, transformer networks that they have this uh, notion of attention and uh, have a way of uh, encoding attention and actually reading from the from the inside of the network where it spends attention energy so to speak like there was recently there was a there was a paper by facebook meta research about protein detection or protein shape detection which actually works by training a network uh, and then looking where the trained network looks. Mm. And, and from the patterns of where it looks, deducing where might be the actual points of contact or points of inflection in the molecular structure of the protein. Mm -hmm. So, so and, and people use this sometimes for website uh, um, design that they have people look at the website and then they look at their eyes where they look and then right. they learn what catches their attention. And, well, it's, and so it's, in it's a way not... that would be a better environment. So if I'm finishing up or I'll mm. wrap it up. So ideally we would have a way to present higher dimensional uh, landscapes mm. of uh, connections for arguments and, and and relate that to whether people actually take notice and look at the right thing so mm -hmm. so uh, uh, perhaps in a, in a not so far future there will be uh, engines which track students uh, whether they look at the right connections mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. if not they might use highlighting to guide mm -hmm. the attention to the proper and and try to measure if it actually arrives or provide a feedback mm -hmm. loop of conversation which uh, uh, supports this learning by relating things and 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 the, and and the, when when I, whenever i look at uh, the the texts the emails or or videos i uh, part of my mind overlays what would be ideally offered as a, as a support for a student who wants to get uh, to understand it easier or faster or uh, with less errors. And I think, I mean, when I hear you talk about this, starting with uh, Chad GPT, but uh, I have this image of a dog, you know, like who's able, you know, so a, a foreign creature who's able to, um, like, let's say, smell things out, you know, but we can watch the dog and then learn ideas based on what the dog is doing. You know, we can kind of like have a parallel knowledge, you know, so we, we get hints from what the dog is doing. Um, and so similarly, like uh, we can learn to train ourselves, you know, or be trained, etc. cetera. But um, one, let's see. And I guess maybe one of the, in terms of our own discussion group uh, and just the whole tiny community we have, but I'm very appreciative of what Kirby has done, what uh, John Brett is doing in the sense that someone like you can be watching the dynamics and you see all the obstacles, but it helps you appreciate like, well, this is where we are. You know, So if it was just silence, you know, it would not be informative. But the fact that we have this, uh, a bit of noise, you know, that's, um, informative in a sense because we're trying you know failing sometimes maybe sometimes succeeding a little bit so i i'm glad to hear that uh there's at least partly meaningful um absolutely and uh, you uh, i i uh, maybe i shouldn't have 
uh, uh, went fully on the meta level of that. Mm -hmm. There are, of course, interesting topics in the details or in the objects of mm -hmm. these discussions and there are probably uh, lots of insights which could benefit me or others who follow these discussions because they can always take the hint and do their own research about right. a particular name which is dropped or right. a particular formula or a claim or something like that. You Everybody can uh, always benefit from some noise because it gives an extra twist to one thinking and might be of heuristic value, even if it is not directly related to what people are doing, but it still might offer them a chance to look at uh, things from a different perspective because they had been primed to notice mm -hmm. a type of object like uh, they might see okay maybe there is a different way to different coordinate system to uh, right. and 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 uh, um, even if the discussion is very particular just comparing whatever is the most uh, familiar coordinate alternative mm -hmm. which some person might have enjoyed learning. Mm -hmm. There is this general idea of transforming coordinate systems and mm -hmm. looking what would be the formulas which go from uh, polar to Cartesian or whatever mm -hmm. is the uh, and even if it is a coordinate system which is not um, immediately transformable in a continuous way because it involves some uh, infinite coordinates which uh, are only interpretable with a particular frame of mind or a particular mm -hmm. philosophy, it's still possible to relate such coordinates by something which I very much like, which is, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of parallel coordinates. No. That is a, that there is a book by, uh, by a, a guy named Inselberg. And the basic idea is that you can um look at uh, you if for instance if it is a two-dimensional coordinate system you are normally using you could just uh, plot the two coordinates separately mm -hmm. on 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 lines which on two are lines on two parallel lines right yeah instead of doing the usual cartesian uh, plane axis, right uh, you you just uh, will, and this scales very well because if you do that, there is no limit to the number of parallel coordinates. You can have many dimensions, right? And you can just identify if you if you have a particular thing which uh, or a transformation which relates. Uh, coordinates, then you can identify the signals uh, on the on these different. Well, like in like in four dim them. in four dimensions, it's easier to see if two shapes are basically similar, perhaps yeah, you know, or two vectors, yeah, for example, can. because because you don't have this problem of perspective; it's all flat. Yeah. So. Yeah. On the other hand, it gets confusing fast. Because mm -hmm. you don't have the have the identification, the natural identifications of the projection coordinates, and then and, and to some degree you could always do a projection in a 
lower dimensional space right. if it's not too high dimensionally. The higher dimensional your basic space is, the less useful mm -hmm. a flat projection will be. Um, are there any uh, videos that you watched or anything that uh, was uh, memorable in terms of the videos? Uh, I don't want to go into the, the, the. I would have to look at it again. Uh, I see. So, I, I, so uh, and it, and my critique is probably uh, if I would uh, critique or or, mm -hmm. or lotation or whatever, but I, I I would prefer to before I I uh, for the before I leave records about sure. things which I have seen but might already be confused in what goes there. I mm -hmm. think it would be nice maybe to to look at, uh, at at videos really from again from the perspective of how to actually um, uh, format a response. Sure. Because you you would really need to go for particular moments, and and the basic idea is that I, I admire you that you do these videos, but I but 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 but, um, but I, I, it's too complicated for me to really justify any particular evaluation at the moment. Okay. I, we, 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 sh we should. Uh, that's fine it's just you I know i'm just i'm because just fishing i risk uh, saying something which is demotivating and no i think that's not on, up. i think uh, on, because well, i mix it up i, I didn't no i just think uh, it's just it's just helpful to get sometimes any any feedback any impressions you know so uh even if it's demotivating i don't know it could be you know my mom will ask like well why is your nose so red you know that's her that's her so so of okay. course that's uh I don't know I don't it's, I told her if three people tell me that I'll start to worry about it but I don't know why you know so yeah. different people notice different things but yeah I I, I so so maybe a, a good uh, uh, thing is I that you do a bit of theater about it you like which, that or yeah we, 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 because it it, it, it it gives a chance for people who uh, have no real way to relate to what you want to say mm -hmm. on a, on a content level, especially if they are new to that. Mm -hmm. So when they observe your emotion, then this right. might create some resonance which works even if there is only a very fragile um, level of actually uh, knowing the terminology and the uh, methods that sure. you are introducing. So Can that I... it's really noticeable that you uh, have a positive attitude about it. Oh, good. And this is one of the things which you will help people to go over the uh, shaky bridges they have to yes. <laughs> <laughs> shake it because not because not necessarily because of their construction because even if their construction like if you go over a, a bridge made out of glass right you look down you feel a little bit uh, I think I think it's not. I mean, the the, the, happen, the bridges you know? may be shaky, but I mean, I think like you just said, the real well, issue yeah, is that the re the real issue is that the altitude. You know, I'm walking yeah. on bridges that are very high. You know, like you know, exactly, I'm doing yeah. things that could anger God. You know, <laughs> and so if people yeah. don't believe in God, even you know, the whole thing is just very you know. It's very problematic. Could I see your whole face? Because I only see one eye right now. Okay. I don't know if, uh, yeah. I don't know so, if you can um, change uh, your... So, yeah. Um, uh, true. I, the, the higher the abstraction, the easier the, the, the misunderstanding. I mean, or, yeah. or, the, or the fear, or I might misunderstand that, or... Or be um, fooled, or be or just be confused, or whatever it is, you know, so it is a... 
and 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 there is actually something which is uh, uh, for me quite interesting that uh, I, I wanted to ask you about uh, to, uh, whether you invested energy in understanding uh, the different proof styles of modern mathematics, like in particular, the more formalist and the more uh, constructivist, intuition, mm -hmm. intuitionist perspectives. I'm not sure if I even get the understanding properly. I'm a little I'm... bit, uh, how can I say, um... I'm a little bit familiar, but and yeah, you you mentioned the main distinction that there's the traditional um you, you called it, I guess, formalist, and then there's the um one that's increasingly gaining interest, this constructivist, intuitionistic uh, uh so there's these two schools. And I'm pretty much agnostic because um my interest is on a different level. You know, I'm looking into the cognitive uh, foundations of mathematics, for example. So I don't think that um, deep down inside mathematics is axiomatic. I think that there are um, motions, you know, mental motions, mental uh, concepts that we're leveraging, and there's some very primitive ones. And and in fact, um, the way I actually was able to systematize uh, the ways we figure things out in mathematics. So there's 24 ways um, epistemologically, and they're all um, structures that we use in the mind. Uh, to um, uh, to manipulate things. So, for example, I actually made a video. It's the most popular video I have. I don't know if you saw it, but on um, deep structure versus surface structure. Mm -hmm. And so I look at Euclid's first problem. So as an example, so Euclid's and George Polya has a book, How to Solve It, and he discusses this uh, problem. And it's, a, it's the example of uh, you have a line segment. Now build an equilateral triangle using that line segment as one side, right? And so uh, there, there's uh, the solution is uh, classical. Uh, you use a compass, and so you draw one circle, and then you draw another circle, and you see where they intersect. See, so, and he calls, uh, George Poya calls that the pattern of two loci, I think, like the pattern of two, like, solutions, basically. See, so the way I analyze that, I go, oh, you see, in order to solve this problem, you have to have a lattice of conditions. You have to realize that there's one condition which will give you the first circle. There's another condition which will give you the second circle. And then there's both conditions need to be met by the point. You know, the first condition being that uh, from one end of the line segment, the, the new point that you're going to create has to be equal, you know, that distance away. So that's one condition. And then that's true on the other side that you have this other point in the line segment. It'll also have to be that distance away from the. So that's two conditions. That's uh, two circles. Uh, the, com the you can have no conditions, and you can have both conditions. So when you have both conditions, um, then you get two possible solutions. So that's a little tiny diamond-shaped lattice, you see. And it turns out to solve this problem in your mind, there has to exist a diamond-shaped lattice. Otherwise, I don't really know how you would solve it. But but this is how I this is how they solve it. This is how I solve it. So. That is natural math. You know, this is an example to show, you see, this little lattice of conditions is something that's built into the way we think. And that is math that's kind of like part of our mental toolkit. But this whole thing about triangles and equilateral and et cetera, you know, this whole geometric aspect, that's, um, that's on the surface level. It's really not relevant for solving the problem. The deep level is this lattice of conditions. And so I found that, that's one example, but I found like 24 different structures like that uh, that are relevant for, uh, you know, solving problems. And they make a beautiful system. It's all, you know, very logically kind of set up. And if you look at any discipline, it could be neuro. I've done it for neuroscience or biology or chess, et cetera. You know, you get a similar map, you know, or any personality, anybody like, let's say, look at Jesus's ways of figuring things out. Or I've looked at my own ways. I think if I looked at your ways, you know, we could study them and they'd make this pattern of 24 ways. It's very... So it's very real for me, um, but um, uh, why am I saying this? Because um, what were we talking about? 
Oh, you were talking about intuitionist versus, uh, I'm rewinding the tape, intuitionist versus, let's say, formal. So this idea, what is the language that makes uh, math um, happen at all? You know, I mean, I was just reading, uh, listening to a video. Uh, they're talking about foundations of math and that uh, the issue of foundations of math is validity. You see, but we don't know if math is valid. But we know that math is interesting, meaningful, useful, you know, and it's it's not really about validity. It's about like, well, how does it work and what's going on? You know, what is happening here? So that's the um, that's yeah. a much more basic question. And these ideas of like, well, what's the proof style? You see, that's a very much a subtle thing, I think. Well, and and. Um, uh, uh, if you start uh, with Euclid and give this example, um, perhaps it would be uh, useful to see the example also as an example from the perspective of Euclid, because he is, he is uh, perhaps one of the inventors of uh, axiomatic method. And it is a bit uh, strange that instead of taking it as taking his example for axiomatic method and using it as, uh, uh, as an example to uh, introduce uh, a method of inquiry which tries to uh, not use axiomatics but uh, like a, your mm -hmm. private uh, distillation of what you perceive as right. your uh, uh, self observed uh, so, processes. So there's that, there's, that, there's, there, there's that distinction. Um... There's that distinction, you know, what is the math on the paper and what is the math uh, in the mind? And so I'm trying to say, people just are focusing on what's happening in the paper, but more primitive is the math in the mind, but they just don't have a way to talk about it. So I'm trying to say there is a way to talk about that. That's what, and there's actually two issues. One is the way we figure things out, but the other is how do mathematical concepts and objects unfold? You know, the questions, the theorems, you know, how do all the branches of mathematics unfold? So. That is something I'm interested also um, in making, you know, slowly gaining some ideas about that. So I wanted to ask you also, um, let's see, uh, what is your relationship with truth? How would you uh, describe that? It's great if you can uh, be truthful and uh, I reserve the right to have a mental inner reservation if I'm forced to uh, relate to people who are not interested in truth, but only in their dogma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's very, very important that you have your inner system of truth and be able to um, separate it from what you present to the outside. That's actually a matter of, mm -hmm. matter of survival in many cultures that they basically operate on the assumption that people have to adopt what they perceive as true as true and are otherwise threatened with all kinds of uncomfort. Mm -hmm. so, the, so the mathematician's private inner mind uh, has the ability to understand what others present as proof, but still have a reservation about the convincing or not not convincing status of that proof which they internally uh, hold as a matter of their own evolution of mm -hmm. understanding in the world. So my world model includes world models of people which have different ideas about truth and my own 
way of thinking about uh, relations as true or not true is something quite uh, decoupled. So I think one, in order to reflect that, mm -hmm. you probably need some log logic of modalities which permit formulations of um, how do you so say certification like you mm -hmm. might be willing to certify a certain argument in your own mind as completely convincing mm -hmm. like for instance but but this usually uh, for me for me entails that I have a very uh, dense uh, semantic structure which supports that. For instance, uh, a, a proof like that there are in, in, is an infinite number of primes. Mm -hmm. So this can be presented in a very convincing way mm -hmm. and it needs just a few uh, axioms uh, which um, make sense for from my understanding and even if some of the notions of the proof might be uh, very big uh, like for instance if you in have infinity involved mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there is already uh, a certain uh, leap of mind required which goes beyond our everyday understanding. There are no infinite primes for me here. And so well, you could basically say it can't be true, but, but still mm -hmm. there is this uh, perhaps even spiritual uh, idea that you uh, believe in constructions which proceed by induction. But and, even if this induction goes to infinity. And I think the thing I caught from what you're saying, I think, is that like um, you know, to maybe say it briefly, um uh oh yeah, it, it, the truth is an inner integrity that you that seems yeah. to, to is that... And it is constantly under threat because there is always people who want to make the world as simple as they would like it to be, no, no matter what. Well, and, and also, you, and and to do that, and, and to do that through power, you are and to... always in a very, to a certain degree, you might not even be willing to say that you are currently thinking for yourself right. and just pretend that you're not even thinking anything. And, because and so, it's and, safer and, than to, to say that you uh, cannot uh, follow that uh, critical step in argument if it is uh, under sanction to uh, to have uh, even a question about the validity of a certain thing, this might basically cost the life. If you are, if in this, you, uh, the, so uh, you agree. said like in, inner integrity, which is under attack, uh, like where where people try to control control our external selves and 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 use that over us. Uh, so yeah. but that there's but that this inner integrity could be transcendent in some way you know that if we maintain inner integrity you know we're transcendent with other people maybe with god who all maintain this inner integrity there's a network of inner integrity that we may belong to i don't know if that's part of your picture but um Borges was uh uh held by, uh, there is a legend that Borges was held by um uh, security forces uh of uh, in in the country at the time it was like we're going to be government. booted off so we'll use the same link okay you were you were explaining a story about um the security yeah, in the box. i want to keep the story so loose that it is 
uh, not uh, directly tied to any particular situation because it uh, might make the story less uh, valuable if we burden it with too much detail. But uh, but uh, the, so the, basically, the point of the story is that um, that this uh, literary person is uh, faced uh, with a, a choice to act in a way which it doesn't want to mm -hmm. or face the consequences. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this beautiful mind mm -hmm. uh, found uh, a way to reply to that uh, challenge mm -hmm. uh, by mobilizing this idea that uh, one can be afraid of what future generations might think of what one does. Mm -hmm. uh, and this might be a, a concern which trumps any uh, concern for what might be the near-term consequences which had been suggested. So a person might in the end say, uh, look, I see that I might end now, but mm -hmm. this makes my decision even easier because I'm actually um, more afraid of uh, the far future where mm -hmm. my uh, decision will be considered than uh, the near future where, when you are considering my near mm -hmm, future. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this is, uh, this is, uh, terrible, a terrible situation. And, um, the legend has it that actually this, this type of argument convinced his, uh, opponents uh, to uh, not follow up on the initial thread. So we, that's why we... It's uh, a very, I'm just thinking, it's a very powerful argument because uh, it's inclusive. You know, like if you have someone threatening you, right, in the short term, let's say, but you're yeah. able to tell that person, you know, in the long term, people will care. And now it means that... Uh, and if and if you're going to make me choose about the long term people over you, it connects you with the long term people. Yeah. See, it, it kind of says that you're not alone here. You know, you think you're alone here in the short term, but no, there's a bigger picture, and you're part of it. And you have to decide. You know, where do you want to be in the bigger picture? But I, because, but but I see it this way. I may be right or maybe wrong, but I see this. But I'm yeah. including you, and I think it's a very beautiful thing to do. It's a very um, it's very, of course, a frightening thing to do, but it's a beautiful thing to do, and it can be effective, I think. Uh, yeah, I, in in the end, of course, we are in a mad situation. Mm -hmm. In the end, we are facing situations where there are no future generations. So some people go far, far beyond this uh, old story and uh, play a kind of uh, bully game uh, which involves uh, the end of all generations. Well, and I think that's... Uh, and that, know, that, no, that's, po that's possible. Yeah. But another, another way that I look at it is... Uh, and this is maybe the sum of my whole philosophy, like what I think is wisdom. So, you know, wisdom is this fact that uh, God does not have to be good. Life is the fact that God is good, but eternal life, growing forever, living forever, learning forever, means that uh, uh, distinguishing, you know, what's good in this system and then what's just simply beyond this system. And that there's just two different things. You know, they're not necessarily related, um, uh, but certainly the, there's something bigger than this system. Um, and when we, and that's the situation, that's the context where we grow. So that's exactly very much exactly the type of situation you're saying. Like, you know, I can worry about this system, but maybe there's just a bigger point of view, you know, where this system is very just conditional. It's not very, 
And so if I behave unconditionally, you know, and I have to grow, uh, I need this type of decision making in order to grow beyond this system, you know, and in order to make this system richer, in order to make myself richer and and and, uh, and grow grow greater and, and clearer and brighter. So if I'm making those choices, then I don't really belong in this system. And, you know, whatever happens to the system doesn't really affect me in a certain sense. I'm not really part of this system. I'm kind of like with the siding with what's beyond this system. So I think that that's the, that's the choice uh, and that's the wisdom. That's what I think. Well, the problem is the Fermi uh, uh, calculation of uh, the... Or, or the, the problem is for extraterrestrials. Are, yeah, there are too few too few extraterrestrial signals <laughs> for uh, the number of inhabitable habitable planets. It looks like intelligent species uh, self extinguish efficiently. But but it doesn't have to be. Yeah, it doesn't have to be intelligent species like that. All other civilizations around us exterminated themselves because of stupid belief in <laughs> the superiority of their own truths. Well, um, or um, it may be. Um, so first of all, this idea that if our whole universe is a bit conditional, like, but is there something beyond, is there a context beyond that, you know, that we can identify with? It doesn't have to be, you know. I think like, at least there is no electromagnetic signals of any surviving truths. Well, all that's, all sure. The concepts of truths mm -hmm. extinguish the societies uh, which could have... Uh, been observable to us in well it is it, it, it i would agree that it's very lonely so okay so i think this was a, a lot said on this so i will publish this as a separate uh, video just to, to introduce you and me like we're well, better introduce you in conversation is that fine or mm. in the yeah, let's, domain? Let, let, let's edit whatever uh, should be edited it's difficult but maybe you could use Maybe I'm, I'm inclined not to edit just because I think, um, I mean, where do you draw the line? I think that we didn't say anything uh, problematic, yeah. right? It's Let, let's try to to keep it uh, simple, yes. Um, uh, okay. I, I'm, uh, this, these are real concerns for me because when I say um, MAD, it, mm -hmm. I actually use the acronym. And... Uh, so this means um, mutually assured destruction. Right. And this is, for me, like a real uh, issue on a cosmological scale, because this is what our astrophysics research tells us, that MAD actually right. works. I see from that, and then and then just the cost, like to realize that, um, to realize that you know, uh, just in terms of nature, like if we wiped out our species, how many how many millions of years would it take to have another human species? But certainly at least five, probably, but maybe maybe fifty, you know, maybe five hundred. We don't know, but it, it it's a huge loss to nature if we destroy ourselves. You know, it's not a like. Uh... It takes long enough, and uh, periods of uh, truth uh, broadcasting mm -hmm. are short enough that right. uh, we never um, uh, had the chance to listen to truth from outer space, and <laughs> right. there probably is no chance for another civilization to listen what, to what we broadcasted as truth, because these periods of civilization do not overlap sufficiently. Mm -hmm. And so this means that um, to learn how to handle truth is a matter of not self-extinction. And so... And so um... Just to add, like, so these this video on bring peace to Russia and Ukraine, uh, this video, uh, vision for our future, you know, it's uh, an attempt to address that because, you know, these this this war could be 
many times more destructive we haven't seen the beginning of it you know and uh and uh, it could be the start of something 10 you know 100 times more terrible so um and what are we doing about it and people you know what do people want to do about it so trying to show you know that's an, a practical wisdom i think uh, to try to show that we can do things about it so mm. so if you if and you no chance you don't pass the firewall <laughs> uh, the the people the people who see this uh, are not the people who would have to see it. Well, I think uh, I, I think we are basically in a very fractioned uh, communication landscape already. There is uh, a, sure. a very very efficient um, technology which makes sure that uh, the truth is under control. Well, so I think uh, like. That I like this idea of the vision for our future because if a billion people published vision for our future, you know, everything would be solved, there'd be no wars, you know, but if a hundred million or 10 million people published it, that still have a huge effect. Now, even if yeah, a million... Not about publishing, it's been, it, it, the problem is that you are not reaching uh, people if you, first of all, Publishing your own ideas can be very risky in many situations. Well, second, mm -hmm. even if you do run the risk of articulating your own perspective, it's very unlikely that this message uh, ever leaves the bottle in which you sent it. You're talking, well, I'm saying in our society, in our society, you know, even 10 million people, you see, if 10 million people had the consciousness to publish their visions for our future, those 10 million people would be able to work together, find each other and have a huge effect. Um, I think that, uh, you know, and they would have a, an enormous effect. So even if we could get like 100 people, like, you know, I'm just focusing on 10. Can I get 10 people to do that? And I invite you to be one of those 10, because I think, you know, you'll certainly make it more interesting um, with your vision. So please think about that. And then we'll we'll have 10 maybe we'll uh, get help to get it to 100 and to a thousand and then people will start to take it interested you know in that so so that's my invitation to you to think about your vision yeah i, I think it's not uh, not very probable that i will uh, formulate uh, such a vision mm -hmm. because it doesn't have to be positive I'm, I'm, it could I'm, be negative yeah, but i'm i'm, I'm uh, it could be very negative. It's your choice. It's, it's, too, it's very, very difficult not to uh, get misunderstood. Almost all formulations which you could design will, from a certain uh, point of view, look very uh, well, well, why different. Don't, why it's don't... like yeah, there are these... There are these um, Escher drawings mm -hmm. of impossible right. configurations of 3D shapes. Sure. And, and um, so of these shapes in 3D, which from a particular perspective look like if the impossible structure mm -hmm. is real, because you can bend, uh, you can bend uh, a, a triangle out of metal, mm -hmm. you can bend it in a way that it looks like if it is uh, actual manifestation right. of the um, impossible triangle. And then you even got video documentation that it exists. Oh, oh, oh. And, uh, and it is possible to create it by having the necessary metal working equipment to create that torsion in the metal to mm -hmm. present it and have a have a camera and the lens and the perspective of videotaping it and then you can actually touch it and interact with it mm -hmm. and treat it as real but the reality still depends on the position of the camera mm. um, and, and the person who demonstrates that is uh, 
using this particular positioning of the camera mm -hmm. to create the impression that this artifact is real. Mm -hmm. And in and in a, in a communication situation, the the interpretation of the communication is like you move uh, your camera position in a position which, if you are open, you move the camera around and show right. how this uh, looks from different perspectives. And this gives an additional dimension to the artwork which is presented. So that's but what... Uh... If you are unfair, then you just pick your particular camera present uh, position and present the artist as a liar or give him other right. uh, labels which you just justify by choosing your particular position of interpretation of what the artist has formulated. So even so if the is artist it? is very skilled and makes a great impossible triangle to be in a discussion with Escher and mm -hmm. the and art of the previous century, it still can happen that the, the effect is totally contrarian and is and uh, and the artwork is be, is getting used against the intention of the artist. Well, I think it's maybe not. Um... It's not about the intention of any single person. It's the intention of all the participants to say, like, we want people to be able to look at it from different points of view and be able to discover the unity. You know, that there's this landscape of truth. We're in very different situations, but we want to hear from each other. So we're not trying to control it, any one of us, you know, to say it has to be this way. We're trying to present it, you know, from our inner truth, hopefully. But even if we don't, we're trying to make sure to include as many different people as possible, you know, so that we can get the whole perspective so that we can see, you know, how, are, you know, how, are, how do we fit together? And so the next time we talk, hopefully in a couple of weeks, uh, uh, if I would ask you, um, you know, uh, could we um, record, a, a, you know, your vision for the future, our future, and, and then see if, uh, if you're in the mood for that, we would do that. Uh, so you could think about that if you like. Yeah, maybe. Um, <laughs> okay, so we end we end this really discussion here. Mm -hmm. We really we end we end this part here. A, a perspective, and it is actually makes it a lot more difficult if you um, uh, contextualize it in in whatever. Uh, actual uh, conditions because so it doesn't have to it doesn't have to be connected i think it's helpful to hear the connection like with with russia and ukraine it doesn't have to be connected it's yeah, still part of it i think actually it does a disservice to even uh, e even if even if one decided to a reference a particular uh, mm -hmm. moment in history uh this might help oneself in feeling uh, uh, a release of an inner pressure to say something about it because people have of course have deep emotions because they have compassion with the people who cannot uh, act truthfully in that situation so uh, so there is a lot of uh, compassion mm -hmm. if one observes the news or what and, and probably uh, some people are probably intelligent and sensitive enough to um, uh, see more in the images than is actually shown and mm -hmm. read more in the comments than is actually if if you have ever been in a country where there is 
uh, limited uh, uh, press, then in, then you learn that even if there is only certain newspapers available, you learn a particular style of reading newspapers, which right. involves seeing which articles are not there and seeing which paragraphs are not in the article. Yeah, and, and that's true. That was true. Like that was true. Language model, you, you add whatever is missing. And of right. course, this is a hallucination then because you are very uh, likely to misunderstand because... Well, it can be... Let's all give an example. example. I'll give an example. I can give an example of that. Like many people in Lithuania became racist uh, because, in part, because of Soviet uh, articles about how uh, Black Americans were oppressed in the, Amer in the United States. So then people would turn it around and say it must be their fault, you see, like, you know, because of just, you know, because of these complicated algebra of reading things, it's just, a, but I think um, one, you know, even in the, of course, in the mainstream press here with Ukraine, like one thing that's not written about uh, hardly at all, I think is just, I just uh, imagine, you know, that in the next several decades, there will be a huge trauma among the people of Ukraine. You know, just a huge amount of trauma, no matter what happens. It's just a very horrible situation. Uh, and so now people are trying to survive, you know, but in 10 years, let's say, lots of trauma going to be from, you know, broken families or people, uh, or people, you know, not able to um, cope or whatever. Maybe, maybe not, maybe I don't know. Not, but, maybe... but this is highly speculative because... Uh, there is uh, it's terrible war for for all people. Same in same in Russia, I think. But uh, mm -hmm. it, it's it, speculative. It, it, but it, I think. It it, but I it's... just wanted to say that uh, Germany, for instance, mm -hmm. recovered very well. Okay. Very quickly. So if you if you are uh, if you and and because of because there was the Marshall Plan mm -hmm. and uh, there was huge investments in uh, and financing given to because that was a, a competitive competitive situation uh, on both sides of the Iron Curtain. Right. So there was. Uh, was an investment uh, was an investment uh, challenge also mm -hmm. and uh, so it, it, a lot of a lot depends on uh, what you uh, what you assume uh, what is the actual uh, 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 that, uh, uh, what is the actual uh, freedom of people to live their truths because there was on the one hand of the Iron Curtain, there was one Germany, mm -hmm. and on the other side of the Iron Curtain was another Germany, right? And they had basically the same history. They both lost the war, which they started, right. they both were war starters, mm -hmm. both lost. Mm -hmm. And on one side of the curtain, they could basically be more easy about bringing the inner mm -hmm. and the outer truths in alignment. And on the other side, it was nearly impossible to bring that in alignment. And it was a tightly controlled. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It was like a Northern Korea, Southern Korea situation mm -hmm. in a mm -hmm. way. And they had very different attitudes to freedom of press and careers and markets mm -hmm. and investment. And, and in the end, from our previous part of the conversation, in the end, it was the uh, distinction between being able to think yourself about what you want to be convinced of Mm -hmm. or being forced to claim to be convinced in order to even exist. 
And the effect was that after a few decades, the one side was living uh, in a quite uh, prosperous mm -hmm. context, and the other side uh, finally managed uh, to overthrow the people who wanted to control their truths. And, and and that might be an example, even a very a very uh, possible example in terms of how you know Ukraine and Donbas may proceed. You know, like where they may be separate for forty years, they may be reunited later. You know, they may be under very different systems. And see, so just having that perspective, you know, that uh, um, that uh, it doesn't have to all, you know, well, that you know, there's different, there's just different things to think about and talk about. So, but I want to say that uh, thank you for telling me uh, about your relationship with the truth, just the very beginning, because it seems like a very intense relationship. Uh, and it's very helpful to put uh, within the big picture. Thank you to Michael Schreiber. And thank you for watching, for liking, for subscribing, and for supporting me through Patreon. I am Andrus Kulikowskas. This is Math. For wisdom.